Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here again. So in this video, I just want to show you how you can configure the routing protocol, which is the dynamic routing protocol OSPF on Juniper. So what is OSPF? It's open shortest path first. It is a link state the dynamic routing protocol, which we use it internally inside our network. So inside the autonomous system. Now, before I start uh, with the points, I just want to ask you that in case uh, you like uh, my uh, videos and you like uh, the work that I'm doing, so please register to my uh, channel on YouTube and please click on the bell so you are also notified for any videos that I'm doing. Now, as you can see here, we have a lab of four points. Before I start doing those points, let's go to the lab scenario so we understand what is the scenario we are going to work on. Then I will come back to the points and start doing that. So this is my lab scenario. I have two routers here, which are uh, Genos devices. This one is an SRX210, and this one is an SRX100. So those are used devices. They have end of life, but no problem. We can still do the lab using them. So uh, what I'm going to do now, first of all, the interfaces, which are this one and this one, they already have the IP. So I put them for them the IP, which is this one, 192.1.2.1. So, and this one is 192.1.2.2. So why I use 1.2? Because we have router 1, router 2. So I say 192.1.2.1.2 1.2 means router 1, router 2. That's what I like always to do. And this is dot 1 because it's router 1. This is dot 2 because it's router 2. Now, what I need to do is to create the remote networks. So on router 2, I have to create this network. So we assume that we have two networks, which are 2.2.2.2.2 .2 .2 .2 .2 and 22, 22, 22, 22, 22. So again, because that's router 2, that's why I'm using uh, those uh, addresses. And on router 1, it is 1.1.1.1. So we have to think that those two routers, they are for uh, two uh, uh, departments or two companies, whatever, they are connected to each other and then they have remote networks, so means LANs. Everyone has a LAN from a side. Now, in case, for example, we have a computer over here on this network, which has the IP 1.1.1.1. He wants to go to the computer, which is over here, which has an IP of 2.2.2.2.2. So he will send his request to his gateway, which is router one. And he will say to router one, router one, I am 1.1.1.1. So I'm coming from this network, 1.1.1.0. I want to go to the network, which is 2.2.2.0. So that's the network because the router doesn't see IP, he see the network. So the destination is this network and the source is this network. So the router will look on his routing table. Do I know the destination? which is 2.2.2.2. So he knows about this one because it's directly connected to him. He knows about this one because it's also directly connected to him, but he doesn't know about this network, but also about this network. He doesn't know about them. So in this case, what router one will do, he will just drop the packet. He will not be able to send it. Same if we have from router two, two uh, also trying to reach to 1.1.1.1. So this comes to router two, router two will check on his router table, uh, he doesn't know anything about 1.1.1.1 in his routing table, so he will drop also the packet. So yeah, but we really want to allow those two networks to be able to communicate to each other. So here we have to create what we call the routing protocol. And uh, we are going in this lab to do the routing protocol for OSPF. So what OSPF would do for us, so let me just clean it a little bit here, so you can see what we are going to do. So what I'm going to do, I have to go to router one and on router two, because both they have reachability on the, the IP because I have put an IP on them. I will enable first OSPF on router one and I will advertise on router one, this network and this network. So both networks which are connected to that one. Then I will go to router two and also I will advertise this network, this network and this network inside OSPF. So those are known on router two and on router one. So now router one, what he will do, he will communicate from OSPF with router two and he will tell him, hey, router two, do you know about 192.1.2.0 network? Because that's on connected to me. The router two is checking his router table. He say, yes, I know about it because it's also connected to me. So he say, okay, fine. Do you know about 1.1.1.0 network because it's connected to me directly and it is populated on OSPF? The router 2 will check his router table and say, oh no, I don't know about that network. So router 1 will say, okay, here I'm giving you the routing update, add it in your routing table. So he will put here to be able to go to the network 1.1.1.0, then I have to send everything to router 1. 
So that's what router two will do. Now from his side, router two will ask router one, hey router one, do you know about this network because it's connected to me? Then router one will check in his routing table and say, yeah, I know because it's also connected to me. Then we say, okay, do you know about those two networks, 2.2.2.2 and 22.22.22.22, because they are connected to me and they are also advertised in OSPF. Then router one will check, well, no, I don't know about them. He say, okay, I will update you with the information and please put them on your routing table. So he will put those two networks in his routing table. Now, both routers, they know about the destination networks. So in case router uh, for the network, which is on router one, want to go to 2.2.2.2 .2 .2 .2 .2 or 22, 22, 22, 22, he will send it to router one. Router one knows how to reach it. He will say, you have to go to router two and router two knows how to send it to here and vice versa. All right, so this is uh, the idea. So this is what we are going to do. We have to configure OSPF and we have to see at the end if uh, the destination networks can reach to each other. So this is what we are going to do in this lab. Let's go back now to the points and start doing them. Point number one, check if router one can reach router two and vice versa. Let me just put the picture so you can follow what I'm doing here. And let's go to Juniper on router one. Just to mention, OSPF is an open standard protocol. That means you can use it on Juniper routers, you're on uh, Cisco, on Microtech, on Huawei, on any brand, because that's an open standard. It's not proprietary for any company. So that means now if we have a Cisco router and a Genos device, they can communicate to each other on OSPF. Now let's check if router one can see router two. I have to go to the operational mode and I will say ping 192.168.12.2. That's the IP of router two. And you can see that I have a ping reply. Very important for OSPF to work that the two peer routers, they need to have reachability. Otherwise, they cannot update each other about the routing. All right. So that's something we have to be sure that uh, it's working. Let's go to router two. I will move the console cable and I put it on the console port of router two. So we are on router two now. And that's ping now to 192.168.12.1. And also we have a ping reply. Point number one is done. Point number two, now we have to configure the loopback interfaces because I didn't create them. So what are the loopback interfaces? Those are interfaces which are virtual on the router, which we are going to think they are really the destination network. So that means the LAN, because I'm not going to put now two LANs on the routers. I create a loopback interface, which is an interface always up. I put on, on it the IP address, whether it's 1.1.1.1 or 2.2.2.2.2 or 22.22.22.22. And then those becomes like my network. So we have to do on router 1, 1.1.1.1, on router 2, the other IPs. So let's see where I am now. I'm on router 2, so let's work on router 2. And that is also just to show you how you can put an IP address on the Juniper router. So we go to edit. And from here, I have to say edit interface loopback zero. So this is the loopback. And then here I have uh, to say unit zero and then family inet. So the IP that I want to put it for router two, then here I have to say set address. The first one is 2.2.2.2 slash 24. The second one also set address 22.22.2. 22.22 slash 24. And now if I say show, we can see those two addresses. So we have to think that those are two uh, networks connected to that router. And I will say commit and quit and then enter. So now this is configured on router two. Now we need to configure the loopback on router one. So I'll move the cable from router two, the console cable, and I put it on router one. Now we go to router one and let's go up. And from here again, I have to say edit, edit interface, look back zero. And then we have to say unit zero and then family inet because we are putting IP address on version four. And then we say set address 1.1.1.1 slash 24 and then commit and quit. So now those routers, router two has two networks, which are 2.2.2.2 and 22.22.22.22. Router one has one network, but now they cannot, from one side to another side, they cannot see each other. Why? If we say now show a route to see the routing table, look, router one doesn't know anything about 2.2 and 22.22. So that means in case you receive 
a uh, packet from uh, the PC from which is 1.1.1.1 saying that I want to go to 2.2.2.2 for example then he will check the active ones so you can see the, with the stars so that means those are active ones so we see that he doesn't know anything about 2.2.2.2 then he will discard the packet then now we need to create the uh, routing on OSPF to be able to do that and if you want you can do a test if I say now ping 2.2.2.2 coming from so you can say source 1.1.1.1 so that means I'm doing now ping from 1.1.1.1 to 2.2.2.2 then I make enter you can see it's saying no route to host so it doesn't know how to reach it because yeah he will reject it and send us a confirm a, a, an update saying no route to host we don't I don't have any route to reach to that network so now we need to solve this problem using OSPF point number two is done point number three enable OSPF on both router one and router two and then we have to check the routing table. So what I need now to do, I have to go again to here and I have to go to router one first as we are on router one, enable OSPF, and then I advertise the connected network. So those two, actually the interfaces, that's what we have to do. Then we go to router two also, I advertise those interfaces, the loopback and the fast internet, and from the other side, the loopback and the gigabit uh, internet zero slash zero slash zero. And then we have to check if they will know about the destination networks. So we are on router one. We have to go to uh, the configuration mode and then we say edit protocols or SPF. And then we make question mark here. Of course, we have to use now the set and then question mark. And then what we need now to do is to say set area because we are going to use area zero. So set area. And then the area ID is area zero. And then after that, we have to say the interface. So on uh, area zero, I want to put the interface, which is in my case, the uh, gigabit zero slash zero slash zero dot zero. So that is the first interface. And the second interface is the loopback zero dot zero. So why those interfaces? Because I'm going to show you now in a moment, but let's see the configuration. So we put on the area zero, those two interfaces. So those are the logical interfaces where the IP address is set on them. If you want, I can just show you show, uh, I show interfaces terse. You can see that the IP address that we have put on the gigabit interface is on the logical one because the logical one will have the IP address. And also for the loopback, you see 0.0. .0. You see, that is the IP. That's why we have made it over here. If we go up to this level, we have put gigabit 0 over 0 over 0, .0. All right. And also loopback 0, .0. So that's what I have to do from router 1. I will say here commit and quit. And now the configuration is safe. We go to router 2. I will put the cable inside router 2 now and let's go up and uh, again if we look to show interfaces there's we have to put fast internet 0 over 0 over 0 dot 0 and uh, look back 0 dot 0 so we have to go from here to edit to the configuration mode edit protocol OSPF and then set area zero interface fast ethernet zero over zero over zero dot zero and then also look back zero dot zero if we say show so those interfaces are inside area zero and the other interfaces for the other router are also on the area zero now i've said commit and quit so what's going to happen now after this is saved both routers they will communicate to each other on OSPF and uh, they will advertise to each other the networks that each of the router doesn't know and we should be able to see them on the routing table. Now after we have enabled the, the OSPF let's check now if we have a neighborship. So on router 1 if I, I go from the operational mode I say show OSPF neighbor then it will show me that uh, router 1 has formed the neighbor with uh, router 2 which has this is the router ID and you can see it is stateful. Now we have neighborship. Let's see if it has received 
the routing which are 2.2.2.0 and 22.22.22.0 network so we have to say from here show route and indeed you can see that router one has received those addresses you can see them here so you can see that is ospf you see one is for the uh, network id and one for the ip same for 22 all right so you can see that uh, it has learned it from ospf so very good now uh, router one he knows how to reach to those networks so let's try now to see if we do ping to 2.2.2.2 and uh, this time we have to say also from 1.1.1.1 so we are doing ping from 1.1.1.1 until 2.2.2.2 so you have to consider like we are on a computer now which has this IP 1.1.1.1 trying to do a ping to the computer which has 2.2.2.2 and enter and here we go. You can see it is working. Let's try now to do to 22. The 22. The 22.22 from the source and also it is working. So you can see this is how you can configure OSPF. It's just a couple of comments and it works. Now, uh, what I would like to do before we finish this lab to go to router two also. So I'll move the cable and we are now on router two. And then I will go to the operational mode, show OSPF neighbor. And indeed he has formed the neighborship with OSPF with router one, which has this uh, 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 address and uh, this is the router ID of router one and now if I say show route we can see also SPF he knows about this network 1.1.1.1 and uh, also if we uh, go now and try to do ping to 1.1.1.1 from the source to the to the to the to we should be able to reach it excellent and we try now 22 22 22 22 and it's also able to reach it so you can see that by just enabling ospf and putting the uh, interfaces inside the area zero then directly the routers can be updated by the routing of each of ones and then uh, the uh, destination networks can reach to each other point number three is done we have enabled ospf on router one and router two we have checked the routing table and it's fine and point number four we have made the ping uh, and we, uh, we have seen that uh, both uh, uh, networks they can reach each other so this is what i wanted to show you and uh, this lecture is all about how to configure ospf on juniper now there is a nice thing that uh, i will uh, possibly do a video about it in the, uh, the upcoming video on youtube which is uh, for example we let's go to router one now let's go to router one again and from router one if i say show uh, route you can see that router one has learned from router two those two uh, networks 2.2 .2 and 2222 .22. let's say that we don't want that uh, this network to be advertised on ospf so uh, we don't want this to be given from router two to us as an update so we have to add it here so we just want to receive this network is this possible and the answer is yes it is possible using something we call it the routing policy so uh, in the upcoming uh, videos or maybe later i'm going to do a uh, um, video explaining to you about the routing policy how you can manipulate what routes you want to learn and what routes you don't want to learn so that is what i wanted to show you in this video in case you like uh, my way of uh, explanation and you like this video please uh, provide a thumbs up and uh, in case uh, you uh, would like to see more videos from me please subscribe to my channel and uh, click on the bell so you are notified from any videos that i'm adding to my youtube channel thank you very much for your time and see you in the upcoming video